Moscow's there, while underground you can improve the heat of Moscow's there, which will improve the reaction rate. And these types of reactions have not been studied uh, uh, to a great extent. So the aim of this project is to the development of a hydrothermal flow reactor model simulating the underground gasification of heavy hydrocarbons. Why heavy hydrocarbons? Because they are more, uh, more dominant compared with a lot lighter uh, hydrocarbons. So the API density would be of around 20 to 15. And we are using hexadecane. We started this project first by understanding the thermodynamics. And if the thermodynamics work, we understand that the reaction limit, the maximum limit we produce from gaseous species. And if they work, then we do the kinetic uh, experimental uh, work where we obtain the intrinsic kinetic data from experimental work. And based on the intrinsic kinetic data, we develop a new georeactor model. So these are the three steps associated in the, with, 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 with this project. And uh, the, the first step is was to understand the thermodynamics. We made use of the direct minimization of gas free energy. Uh, we've, we've, uh, we've investigated the effect of the temperature, the oxygen, the water, uh, the water ratio, the carbon ratio, on the, the yield of gaseous species as well as the, the, uh, the temperature rise of, uh, in the outlet from, from the reactor. We've made use of Aspen model as the height model to simulate these sort of types of reactions. And this, this, this mathematical model shows you here the, uh, ping, uh, the direct minimization of gas free energy and the ping Robinson equation of state. And these are the equations uh, just uh, being implemented by Aspen Heisen to obtain the, the, uh, the, the results of, 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 the, of the reaction we have being modeled. So these are, these are the first results that they have, uh, have generated out of modeling. And shows you the, the effect of the oxygen to carbon ratio on the, and the water to carbon ratio on the on the yield of, of, of hydrogen. And we can see here uh, the optimum oxygen to carbon ratio under which the hydrogen yield is maximized. And at the same time, we can also observe the rise in the temperature as we uh, as as uh, along, along with increasing the oxygen to carbon ratio. Because as we increase the oxygen, then the temperature will rise. And then we need to bear in mind how, to how much the, the maximum temperature we can operate at. We also, also need to bear in mind the explosion limit and to, to stay below the runaway reaction limit. We have, uh, 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 we have understood the thermodynamics. We have uh, already published our, our, our results in the International Journal of Hydrogen Energy. And then, on top of that work, I have designed a, flow, a continuous flow reactor model simulating the reaction between uh, hexadecane and water under high pressure, high temperature conditions. Now, to, to obtain kinetic results, there are two things that need to be considered. Is one is uh, maintaining a precise control of the temperature and also maintaining a precise control of the residence time. Hence, we have, this, we have filled out this annual space between the furnace wall and the reactor with a copper block to maximize the conductivity between the, uh, the furnace and, uh, and, the, and the reactor wall. And we have also preheated the water stream uh, in the same in the same copper in the same copper block in order to minimize the uh, the temperature difference. And based on the uh, multiplicity analysis we've done, we found that the maximum temperature gradient will happen at uh, the reactor uh, end, while most of the, uh, the temperature across the rest of the reactor is, is, is uniform or will, be, will, uh, will have much less temperature gradient. And this, is the, this picture here shows you the, uh, the reactor setup. Uh, so it's showing you here, the, these are the pumps, the furnace, the heat exchanger, which brings the temperature from 600 degrees Celsius, such a very high temperature, at a, te at, at a pressure of uh, not, not exceeding 230 bar. And uh, it brings down the temperature from 600 degrees Celsius into a normal room temperature, 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, we, of course, we have uh, 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 pressure relief valves here to maintain the safety of the whole operation. So if we have blocks in the reactor, uh, the pressure relief valve of the of the reactor will open at 275 bar. As well, uh, in addition, the pumps will uh, also automatically will shut in case there are any blocks in the line. Uh, we maintain the temperature control using these temperature controllers. And this is the back pressure regulator here, the back uh, the pressure gauges and the bubble flow meter. And based on this experimental setup, I, the first step in, uh, in doing this sort of analysis 
to obtain the carbon bound. And uh, uh, before also we obtain the carbon bound, it's necessary to calculate the, the, the reaction residence time. And it shows you here the residence time has been calculated based on the difference uh, by dividing the volume of the reaction based on the volumetric flow of the, of the fluid going into the reactor multiplied by the density uh, of the reactant of, of the fluid before they enter the reactor uh, to the density of the fluid once they are in the reactor under the maximum under the, the extreme conditions. And by the, uh, uh, using this correlation, we can obtain a better uh, modeling of our residence time. And then, based on this residence time modeling, we have uh, modeled the carbon balance based on the hexadecane entering the system and the the gaseous and liquid liquid species leaving the system. The summation of the carbon balance has generated for us how much. Uh, how much carbon is lost due to cold formation or, or pump pumping water. And we've also been able to work out the uh, fractional conversion of the diesel reactor. And this picture shows you here the, the, uh, the, the difference in the, the oil conversion and the different temperatures. And clearly you can see that we have more gasification as we increase the temperature under supercritical conditions. So the conversion now has been modeled, and from the modeling of the conversion, we have been able to obtain the reaction rate constant. And from these straight lines, the, the uh, square, the, uh, the, the square method, the linear square method, we've been able to uh, to also suggest the, the kinetics of the reaction. It's showing clearly that the reaction is a the the first order kinetic, as has been recorded previously on um, the hydrocarbons, called first order kinetic. And uh, we also find that find out that with the, with increasing the pressure from 220 bar, which that's the supercritical pressure of water. To 150 bar is the subcritical pressure of water. We have less conversion, and from that we've been able to obtain the kinetic, uh, the, the reaction uh, uh, rate constant. Based on the rate constant, we've plotted the Arrhenius plot, showing showing us the activation energy we have paid, and, and, and the, the, the supercritical regime and the subcritical regime, and I can see a, a minor change in the. Uh, in the, in the activation energy, where we have an activation energy of 185.8, almost uh, around 185.8 uh, kilojoules per mole, that's in the subcritical in the subcritical region. While we go to the subcritical region, the activation energy will slightly increase. And this uh, this activation energy is much less than what has been reported previously, especially with anhydrous pyrrole, showing the uh, the good properties of using hydrothermal hydrothermal reforming compared with uh, an hydrous reform or hydrothermal uh, uh, pyrosis, which has been reported previously. And from that, we've, uh, we've obtained the initial uh, Arrhenius uh, equations, which can be used to initially to develop our georeactor model for both supercritical and supercritical. And we've also went further to understand the reaction mechanism of the generation of alkenes and alkanes, which has been which, which shown. Now our GCMS results, and uh, the amount of the activation energy is believed to happen in the, in the initiation step, while the uh, basic hydrogen transfer step is very low here because we don't have much of the being produced compared with the beta with the, the alkenes, and the alkenes are produced from the beta second uh, reaction. Uh, the addition reactions here to generate ad additional alkanes have been also disregarded from the process here from that published recently, and uh, water has played an important role in inhibiting these uh, addition, addition reactions. So we've uh, proposed that, now the, the key finding from this analysis was the, the application of supercritical conditions will play a minor role in reducing the activation energy, and the, uh, the, the, the predominance of the beta fission reaction has been observed uh, uh, because of the uh, dominance of uh, uh, produced the generation of an alkene or an alkane, and the occurrence of the single step FSS mechanism proposed by Fabus in, in 1964 uh, is supported by the equimolar distribution of alkanes and alkenes under, under, all, under all the conditions. And these data would show, would actually open up for us a new promising work towards underground hydrothermal gasification of hydrocarbons for hydrogen generation. Compared with previous results on hydrous and unhydrous pyrosis. And I would and I have to emphasize here, these results which think have been obtained 
and a very long residence time and very high temperatures compared with what has been uh, reported previously. Uh, part of my work was done in China, at Tsinghua University, where I did prepare some nanoscale catalysts for potential applications here in the interior. And the idea was if we coat titanium dioxide with nickel or cobalt to uh, enhance the activity of towards hydrogen generation, and why titanium because of the hy their hydrothermal stability. Uh, and we investigated the effect of pH and temperature on the morphology of, of titanium, the titanium dioxide. And uh, we, we are still, uh, we are now looking forward to the application of these catalysts and comparing their results with what, what, we, what we have obtained previously. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the, uh, the moral and financial support of the government of the custodian of the two holy mosques, uh, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz uh, and the Saudi Crown Prince, Nayib bin Abdulaziz, uh, Deputy Prime Minister and uh, the Minister of Interior for their mor moral and financial support to all Saudi students studying abroad. And in particular, I would like to thank King Abdullah University for science and technology for supporting this project. I also would like to thank uh, the Royal Commission for Jubala Yango, my sponsoring body, the Real Embassy of Saudi Arabia in London, Hotel Bureau, and the Ministry of Petroleum and Minerals. And I would like to end this uh, presentation, of course, by thanking my supervisor, <laughs> Dr. Sal uh, Professor James Mason, and my reaction engineering group. And uh, special thanks also to the Department of Chemical Engineering. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to end this presentation by saying a nice quotation is the, uh, the, the man who has ceased to learn. Uh, uh, ought not to be allowed to let to wander around in these blue, uh, to wander around blue in these dangerous days. That's a nice quotation uh, sent by Saudi and been cited in Fogler uh, books of elements of chemical reaction engineering. Thank you very much. <laughs>